video. Today we're going to be talking Oryx, or more specifically, Iron Jaws. About three years ago today, I painted this War Chanter model, and to this day he still remains one of my favourite models I've ever painted. Since painting him, I've received a bunch more Iron Jaws and they've sat in my garage unpainted until I came across this War Chanter model that I completely forgotten was in my collection. With this model being one of my favourites, and being back making videos on YouTube again, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to make a video tutorial. So today we're going to be looking at how to paint the skin for the Iron Jaw Oryx. So we're going to be starting with this War Chanter model that I've been working on. As you can see, the only element left to complete is the skin. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the main parts of the skin, such as the body and the arms, but I will also provide some steps you can apply to the face that will provide some additional detail. We're going to start with a base coat of dried bark and castellan green in a 50-50 mixture. Make sure to thin your paints down and apply as many coats as are needed to gain a smooth finish. This step is important as we're laying down the foundation for later steps. This colour will eventually make up the shadowed areas of the skin. We're doing it this way instead of using a wash as it grants us far more control over where the shadows will end up. I feel this is important as the skin is one of the main focal points of the miniature so we want to have as much control as possible here. You can take this no wash technique as far as you want, actually not a single wash has been used on this entire miniature, instead it is a mixture of layering and glazing. Next we're going to do a layer of pure castellan green, making sure that our paint is nice and thin. We want it to be thin so that we can almost glaze it on in layers. Painting in this way will give us really smooth blends, which can be very important for skin as it's not overly reflective, meaning that all highlights will be quite gentle and without sharp edges like a metal would have. Make sure you hit all of the flat surfaces here, including the area in between the raised muscles of the chest and abs. Light would hit here, and the area would not be completely cast in shadow. Painting this area will give us a far more realistic effect, and won't leave us with a section of the model that has obscured detail. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss an upload. We're really going to start bumping up the highlights now with a 50-50 mixture of Castellan Green and Elysian Green. Just to let you all know, there is an affiliate link down in the description to Goblin Gaming. Check them out for excellent custom and service, fast delivery and up to 20% off everything you need to hobby. Using the link supports the channel at no extra cost to yourselves. These steps will jump up in brightness considerably, so if you're not happy with the blending between colours, 
glaze some of the previous colour to merge this and the previous layer together. Next we're going to apply pure Elysian Green. Make sure to cover a smaller area with this than we did during the last step. As the highlight area is getting smaller, I've switched out my brush. I've gone from my Winsor & Newton Cotman Series 1 to my Citadel Small Layer Brush. This will give me greater control over the smaller areas. The Elysian Green is a really nice yellowy green that will really make the skin pop. This marks the main work on the skin complete. We are now going to add in more highlights to draw the viewer's eyes towards the chest and face. Now we're going to boost the contrast even further using Ogryn Camo. This will be applied mainly to the face and the central chest, but picking out some specific raised details, such as the top of the biceps. For the final highlight, we're going to add in some Vallejo Panzerace's white into our Ogryn camo. With this we'll be focusing mainly on the face, however don't bother highlighting the lower lip as we're going to go over how to paint that next. To add some more detail to the face, we're going to paint the lips and the tongue. To start with, we'll be applying a base coat of Screamer Pink, followed by highlights of Pink Horror and Empress Children. These will be on progressively smaller areas, focused towards the raised parts.
Thank you all for watching. Please let me know what you would like to see me cover next in the comments down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon to never miss an upload. If you want to support the channel further, then there is a couple of ways you can do so. Firstly, I have an affiliate link in the description to Goblin Gaming. By following this, you can get up to 20% off all your hobbying needs and I get a small kickback at no extra cost to yourselves. Another way to support the channel is via Patreon, where I have some fun rewards and additional content. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.